Yes. I feel God's peace. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, today is the second Sunday in the season that the Christian church recognizes as Advent, a time of waiting. And today I want to share with you a well-known passage of scripture that calls us to wait upon the Lord. From the Old Testament book of Isaiah, there are more prophecies about the Messiah in the Old Testament book of Isaiah than anywhere in all of the Old Testament. So hear these words as we think of our coming Savior. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not grow weary or tired. God's understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youth will become tired and weary, and young men will certainly stumble and fall. But those who hope and wait in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up like the eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, the writer John Simmons tells about a grade school program at Christmas time. I know Nicholas has been putting together a middle school, high school program. High school program for Christmas is always quite fun, and I appreciate the fact that we have Adrian McAtee and Dane um, Wand who are helping us with our nativity program here next Sunday. Children's nativity programs are always fun and interesting. You never know what's going to happen, right? Well, John Simmons says as he was putting this nativity program together, there was one little boy who really wanted to play the part of Joseph. But the teacher didn't select him to play Joseph. She told him that he needed to play the part of the innkeeper. But to make matters worse, the person that she named to play Joseph was his biggest rival. So the little boy, very bitter about all of this, spent time during rehearsals trying to figure out how he would plot his revenge against his rival for taking the part that he felt like he deserved in the play. So the night of the performance came, and Mary and Joseph start walking down the aisle towards the inn where the innkeeper is stationed at the door. Joseph knocks on the door, and the innkeeper opens the door and says, What do you want? And Joseph says, Well, we'd like a room for the night. And suddenly the innkeeper opened the door wide, and he said, Well, sure, come right on in and have my best room. Well, the stunned Joseph didn't quite know what to do at that point. That was not in the script, right? That's not the way it's supposed to go. But like a flash, Joseph thought of something. He stepped into the doorway, and he made a big production of looking to the right, looking to the left, looking up and down. Then he stepped back and he said, no wife of mine is going to stay in a dump like that. Come on, Mary, let's go to the barn. <laughs> Sometimes Christmas doesn't go according to plans. Sometimes Christmas doesn't go according to plans. We have our script all laid out of how we want our Christmases to be. That picture-perfect Christmas, the way it is on the Hallmark cards, right? Norman, Rockwell, everybody sitting around a table or around a beautifully decorated tree, smiles, hearts aglow. 
but Christmas doesn't always happen according to our plans. There are times when somebody or something changes the script on us. A loved one dies. We lose our job. We struggle with divorce. We face a cancer diagnosis. Difficulties happen that seem to upend the script for us. What promised to be a Christmas filled with fun and peace and joy and hope and love has turned into what Elvis Presley famously called a blue Christmas. You remember the words of that old hit, right? I'll have a blue Christmas, that's certain. And when the blue heartache starts hurting, you'll be doing all right with your Christmas of white. But I'll have a blue, blue Christmas. This time of year is rough for many people. I don't know what all of you are going through right now. But I do know that because the days are shorter and the skies are grayer, there are some people who suffer from seasonal affective disorder, which leads to depression, a dark, deep hole of sadness and despondency. There are people who are grieving because of a person who is not going to be at their Christmas table or around their tree this year for the first time, or maybe for the 50th time, for the pain never truly goes away. The Reverend Magde De Vega is the pastor at Hyde Park United Methodist Church in Florida, and he says that deep below the surface... We are all carrying two heavy burdens, the burden of grief and the burden of fear, the burden of grief over things that we've lost in the past and the burden of fear over things that we may lose in the future. Every person, he says, is carrying those two burdens to some degree or another. And add to that the stress and the busyness that Dane talked about, In this holiday season, the hustle and the bustle of all the things that we need to take care of and get done, or at least feel like we need to take care of and get done. And the holiday season is a difficult time for us to find peace in our hearts. Whatever heartache you are facing today, I want you to hold on to the scripture passage that we read today from the book of Isaiah. Many of you have probably memorized it, taken it to heart. And I noticed that Rick picked up on it right away and started playing. He will raise you up on eagle's wings, lift you up in this time. The passage In Isaiah was written at a time that was anything but peaceful for the Jewish people at that time. They were living in exile. They'd spent many, many years away from their home. They were tired and they were wondering, will we ever get back to the life in our promised land? Will life ever be joyful and peaceful again? They were tired of feeling powerless and without hope to make things better in their life. And so Isaiah speaks to them these words. He says, have you not known? Have you not heard? Our God is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Our God does not grow faint or weary And his understanding is unsearchable. For as human beings, we grow faint and we grow weary. But if we wait and hope in the Lord, 
our strength will be renewed. And we can mount up with those wings as eagles. We can run and not be weary. We can walk and not faint. You know, I, I started looking at that verse and I realized something interesting. It seems backwards to me. Because y'all know how proud I am of my baby Joe, right? And he's just now learning how to walk. And as Dane said, we can't fly. But Isaiah starts out, we will mount up with wings as eagles. And then he says, well, I'll take it down a notch. We'll run and not be weary. Well, no, I'll, I'll take it down a notch. We will walk and not faint. Seems to me it should be the other way around. You walk before you run. Then I remembered something interesting that I learned in seminary when I learned biblical languages. I had to take Hebrew and Greek. And in Hebrew poetry, you grow in emphasis as you read through this triplet. The last line is more important than the middle line. And the middle line is more important than the first line. But we love to latch on to that soaring as eagles. We want to soar with the eagles. But maybe, since the last line is more important, maybe the truth of this passage is, in waiting on the Lord, we need to learn how to just walk. To be patient enough to just put one foot in front of the other in the midst of whatever pain and heartache we are feeling and whatever busyness is going on in this world today. You see, for Christmas to come into our hearts, we need to slow down. And that's really what Advent is all about. Advent is a time of waiting a time of waiting that reminds us that the most important quality of a follower of Jesus Christ is waiting. We say it in our communion liturgy. We say, Christ has come. Christ is come. Christ will come again. We are waiting for that day when Christ will come again. We are waiting for that time of peace in our lives. There was a little girl who was all excited about Christmas time. Her parents were going through the mall, and she started singing the Christmas carols that she heard over the intercom. She was so excited about Christmas, but her parents were anything but excited. They were frustrated. They were just worn out and stressed out over all of the crowds and trying to find a parking space and getting the right thing at the right price. By the time they got home, they were hangry. And they just wanted to eat something quick and go to bed. But not the little girl. She was filled with holiday joy, skipping around and singing, Jingle bells, jingle bells. Her daddy looked at her and he said, Cut that out right now and go upstairs and go to bed. The little girl hung her head down low and she walked up the steps. And when she did, there was a window right at the top of the staircase. She walked over to the window and she lifted the window up to open it. Her daddy heard her doing that and saw her doing that. And he said, what are you doing? She said, I thought I heard the angels singing outside. Her daddy said, there are no angels out there singing. What are you doing? I don't hear anything. She hung her head down again and she said, well, you have to listen with your heart. And it's true. In all of the difficulties that we're going through in life, Advent reminds us that we wait upon the Lord by stopping our busyness and starting to listen with our heart for the still, small voice of God in our midst. 
For Christmas does offer us an inner peace. If we will but open our hearts and our minds to receive the gift that Christ came to offer to us. One last story. There was a little boy who spent many, many weeks making something for his mother. He made a little ceramic dish for her. You remember making those when you were young, pottery? He made a little dish for her and he painted it and he he was so proud of it. He made it during his Sunday school time when his teacher was telling the students how important it was to give gifts to people that we love because the Christ child is God's gift of love to each one of us. When he finished making it, it was just a few days before Christmas, and he took that little dish and he was walking down the hallway towards the sanctuary. And as he walked, he was looking at his little dish and he tripped over something and he fell and dropped that dish and it broke. It broke to several different pieces and he started to cry. Other people were in the hallway like they are here at the church. Other people were in the hallway and they went over and they tried to console him and stop him from his crying. Several of them said things like, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. You can make another one. Oh, it was just a little dish. Your mom won't be upset to not have that. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. You can buy her something different. But nothing would console the little boy. His mother then walked down the hallway and she saw him still sobbing and looking at those broken pieces on the floor. She walked over and put her arm around him. She knelt down right beside him and she looked at all the pieces and she said, Oh, that's so beautiful. Let's take all of these pieces and see what we can do, how we can fix it back together. The little boy wiped his tears and helped his mother pick up those pieces to put it back together. He hugged his mother. And in that moment, he learned a valuable lesson about Christmas. Christmas is about God coming to our broken lives and this broken world and helping us to pick up the fragments of pain and sorrow and hurt in our lives so that we might be filled with peace and have that beauty that Christ came to bring to us. So I want to say to you today, if you are feeling broken in your life, if you are feeling sad and lonely and filled with grief, or if you are feeling filled with regret for things that you don't feel good about in your life, The joy, the peace, the hope, and the love of Christmas are God's gift to you. Not in spite of your brokenness and in spite of your pain, but because of that brokenness and pain. Christ came for you. That's what we celebrate in the meal that we're about to share today. Christ meets you at this table. Christ meets all of us at this table to extend to us those beautiful gifts as we come, listening with our hearts for those words of comfort, love, and assurance. May you know that gift of inner peace today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I want to invite you all to just join with me in a time of prayer and reflection that we might lift before God those pains and those hurts and the ways that we have brought pain into our own lives and into this world. There's a prayer of confession printed in your bulletin today that I'd like for us to use. So let us pray. Dear God of Christmas peace, we give you thanks that your love never ends. We are thirsty for your grace. You made a way for us in the wilderness 
and still in our foolishness we go astray. We hide our eyes from your presence. We do not listen. We are lifeless when we ought to dance and speechless when we ought to sing. Forgive us, O Lord. Speak peace to our fearful hearts. Strengthen our weak hands and make firm our feeble knees as we seek to follow in your holy way. Hear now our silent words of confession. Holy God, we give you thanks that you have heard our prayers of confession. Help us now to receive your gift of forgiveness and peace as we pray for you and for one another in all our needs. And for all everywhere who mourn this day, this season, and this year, comfort us in our suffering and make us whole. Where there is loneliness, surround us with your love. Where there is pain and suffering, grant your peace. Where there is darkness, shine your light of joy. And where we are lost, offer your hope. In the name of the Prince of Peace, we offer this prayer. Amen.